What's up, internet? It is Kevin with That Lifestyle Ninja, and I am back again today to teach you how to sell on Amazon FBA, but more importantly, to teach you how to figure out what to sell on Amazon FBA to make sure that your first product is a home run. All right, guys, so I'm not going to waste your time and teach you a step-by-step -step exactly how to walk through uh, setting up a Seller Central account. It's pretty intuitive, and there's lots of uh, tutorials out there. Um, yes, I did register for my Seller Central account with my LLC, but you don't have to do this. What I am going to teach you, however, is a super simple three-step process that I use to select all of the products I sell on Amazon um, and to make sure that you feel super confident about those products, there's no guesswork involved, and to make sure that the very first product that you choose to sell on Amazon is an absolute home run. So all right guys, so step one is definitely make sure that you don't waste your time. Sign up for a good product research software system, right? I use Jungle Scout. Um, they have both a web app and a Chrome extension. I use both of them. Um, you can try out one or the other, but I suggest just signing up for both because they have free trials and they have a super generous refund policy. So just take the dive, do it now. There's no excuses, set it up, and we're gonna walk through it together. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to find a product that's gonna hit it out of the park. All right guys, step two is about reframing your thought process to think about every daily life scenario in the context of Amazon. And what I mean by that is just the other day, so I was over at my friend's house and his dad's a big cigar guy, right? So he has a collection of Cubans and all these different cigars. And so he's showing it to us and I'm saying, to myself, wow, that's actually kind of an interesting little product, the cigar holder, and which I later found out was called a humidor, but at the time, I just wrote down on my phone just a super quick note to myself, research uh, hum uh, cigar holders on Amazon. It might be a cool product to sell. Um, or even just today, so I was meeting a friend at, the, at a restaurant, a little Mexican restaurant um, over in Denver where I live right now, um, and while we were waiting for our food, they were bringing us the menus, and the menus actually came in these cool little plastic slips, kind of like menu covers. And so again, I just jot down a quick note on my phone, check out menu covers when you get back to your house, and you know, some of these products are good, some of them are total failures, but you never know until you check it out. And it's really about just reframing your mentality to always be in the thought process of finding winners on Amazon, and that's the best way to do it. All right, guys, and step three, and probably the most important step, is by is using a method that I call the eye track system. And so this is a method that has kind of been around for a while, but um, I kind of created my own little twist that I found a lot of success with. Um, and so basically what this method does is allow you to see actual sales data of real uh, competitors and other sellers on Amazon. Um, and so something that not, not a lot of people know is that all of the product tracking software like Jungle Scout, Unicorn Smasher, all the different competitors, they're just estimating. Nobody has true Amazon sales data besides Amazon. They don't release it publicly. They have no access via their API. And so all of these product tracking and product research software tools are really just estimating based on daily BSR. Um, and so what you have to do is use what I call the eye track method to actually get real sales data. And I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to do that. It's the number one thing that I use to make the decisions about which products that I'm going to pursue and which products that I'm going to leave. All right, guys. So I'm going to do this live for you. So I apologize that it's not you know, edited and as smooth as some of my other videos, but I wanna, I wanna really try to duplicate and show you exactly my thought processes behind all this. And I'm doing this all live, there's no premeditation for any of this. Um, so you're gonna be, really be seeing exactly how I do my own product research. So I hope it, I hope it helps you guys. Um, so this is the Jungle Scout main dashboard. So this is the service I use. Um, personally, so they have the different marketplaces here. They have um, a variety of different filters. You can filter it by, you know, FBM, FBA, if it's actually sold by Amazon, things like that, right? So the first thing I like to do, and uh, is research in the U.S. market. So one of the more advanced tactics that we'll go over um, a little bit later in this video is looking at some of the other products because. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. You have to deal with VAT, um, value added taxes, things like that. And I actually think of that as kind of a good thing. Um, some of the products that I've launched in the UK market have just been absolutely insane because you can pretty much charge whatever you want because there's no competition. There's the review barriers are significantly lower and things like that. But we'll talk about that later. So the first thing that I like to do is take a look at the category section. So there's some things that you want to stay away from, right? Um, appliances automotive, right? Like some of the things that are more complicated, more expensive, you know, expensive isn't always a, a thing that I stay away from, but I tend to stay away from electronics, um, books, the margins on books are incredibly low unless you have, uh, you know, a huge 
stock and you can get books for basically pennies on the dollar. So just to save time, I'm going to show you the, the categories that I've figured out uh, through my own research and a lot of quantitative analysis um, are the best. So if you want to just trust me, um, feel free to do so. But if you want to take a look for yourself, I always encourage people to tinker around. Um, so home and garden, home and kitchen, toys and games, sports and outdoors, pet supplies, patio, office products. So these are the categories that I like the most. So some, some people don't like industrial and scientific, so you can click this off. Health and personal care, some of the beauty products are going to be gated, which basically means you have to provide Amazon with three invoices to prove that you've already been selling these products outside of Amazon. It's basically a way for them to um, kind of help vet uh, people before that they can just, you know, sell whatever they want, like a skin cream that's made of, you know, uh, hydrochloric acid or something like that. Well, it's a little intense, but you know, it's just to just to explain it to, to you guys. Um, so the filters that I like to use um, are as follows. So a lot of the gurus and things like that say that you should always sell a, a product over twenty dollars, and the reason that they're saying that is because with FBA fees, with storage fees, you know, with shipping fees, and also obviously your cost of goods from your manufacturer, you know, this is kind of the minimum price unless you're basically getting your cost of goods sold for free that you can make a profit kind of worth the time invested to launch a product. And so a lot of people put 20 here. Um, I like to put 1997, 1995, 1994, you know, something like this just to kind of stay one step ahead of people and potentially see products that they would not see because they set it at 20. So I like to go 1993 here. Um, estimated revenue. So this is monthly revenue. Um, I found that you kind of want a product that's you know, five or six thousand um, monthly revenue for it to kind of be worth it. So this is the most important part, in my opinion, guys. Uh, reviews. <clears throat> so you want to reviews are incredibly hard to get on Amazon. Um, they have a very vigorous system for catching, you know, people using their friends and family, and I suggest staying away from that. So getting reviews is really the toughest part. So let's start with forty nine reviews here. Um, so listing quality is one that I like to look at too. Listing quality is out of a hundred, right? So this, this factors in things like, you know, number of pictures, whether or not they have full, uh, bullets, uh, listed out for their, um, product to, to see if they actually are maximizing keywords, things like that. So I like to set this at, um, you know, 74, 73. Something like that. Again, you know, a lot of people are choosing 75, so you want to maybe see a few more products that other people wouldn't by being, you know, just one step ahead. Um, and then the last thing that I like to do is rating. So this is a rating out of five. So this is if you get, you know, 10 reviews and all of them are five stars, then you'd have a five rating here. So you want to kind of target products that, you know, potentially have some room for improvement because then you can take a look at the reviews um, and see if there's something that you could maybe make better and you know, things like that. So once you've done all of this, go ahead and hit search. Um, one other thing I like to do is get more results per page. So while it's working, um, the first thing I do is as you can see, there's a ton of products here, which means that my, um, my variables here are a bit too broad so let's let's step it up a little bit let's do 11,000 revenue and let's make this 39 let's research so again there's a ton of products here and like I said reviews in my opinion are the most important thing so let's let's move that down again all right still a lot of products Move this up to 14. All right, 2,000 results. Wow. All right. Let's let's go up to 24,000. Oh, let's go down to 19. So this will this will definitely move it down a bit. All right, so 859 results. And so you can download it as a CSV if you want. But I kind of like to just look through a couple of them um, and see you know, my thoughts on things. All right, so this one has 19 reviews. What is this? A ballet workout bar. 
Kind of interesting. I would never in a million years have thought to sell that. All right, a shuffleboard, right? So this is expensive. This is yeah. So this is two over two thousand dollars, and this isn't necessarily a reason to stay away from something. Uh, but unless you have a lot of startup capital, this is going to be um, a bit prohibitive, right? Because you want to buy enough to get a low enough price for yourself to make a healthy profit. Um, so here is some electronic stuff, pool lights, right? So this is five hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, if you have experience with electronics, definitely go go ahead and jump in on something like this, right? This is this is an interesting one. I'm actually gonna, you know, I'm actually gonna be doing this research for myself, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be saving some of these products. So, um, hang in there with me. Pro hair removal device, pretty cool hot flash, pretty cool hot flash relief instant cold pack. It's interesting. All right, storage. All right, so this one's doing. 38 grand a month. I, I just realized that I set the reviews the opposite way I intended to. So let's let's look at the least reviews rather than the most. All right, so North Face, you obviously want to stay away from these brand named items. Um, Amazon's pretty strict about that, and you just don't want to be uh, in a situation where you're going to be, you know, having to deal with getting your account shut down for patent infringement or anything like that. So stay away from those big brand names. This is an interesting one. A lot of people say stay away from glass, but you know, if you follow what everyone says, then you're gonna get the results everyone gets. So I don't, I don't listen to what everyone says, but you know, that's just me. And I'm gonna tell you guys straight up what I think about everything. So I hope, um, I hope you're on my side, or at least taking it that I'm being honest, because I, I definitely will, and always be honest with you guys for for better or worse. Um, viscometer, right? So that's kind of a weird one. Schwinn, big brand, filament spool, now, zero reviews, I'm doing 60 grand a month, that's insane, so $600, again, prohibitive kind of on the, on the, maybe the first order, so let's, since, since most of the people are going to be starting out, let's, let's kind of set this to a price that um, people are going to be realistically uh, able to kind of start out on their first one. So here we go. So now we're down to 82, right? So this is a number that we can definitely digest and really dive in deeper on. So NFL, we want to stay away from, right? So bifocal reading glasses, I don't even know how they're doing that with um, the prescriptions, right? This is, this is great. So it's a little funny teddy bear wearing a shirt that says you're an asshole or whatever. Um, so humor is always something that I like to um, incorporate in any of my products, right? Novelty, um, gift items. Gift items are really important in my opinion, right? Because something that uh, a lot of people may not think about right away but is important kind of down the line is uh, return rates, right? So someone just from a psychological perspective, is much less likely to return a product if it was given to them as a gift, uh, which is one of the things that I'm, you know, I don't really share with people because I want to keep it to myself, but I'm sharing with you guys. Um, it's something that I look for a lot in the products that I'm choosing. Um, Dymo Label Writer. Damn, I'm seeing 107,000. Look at this, zero reviews in 107,000. Um, let's look at that, right? So these don't even have images. So sometimes I'm not sure exactly what's happening. Maybe they purposefully miscategorize um, their category and Amazon shutting them down. So you kind of get this no image available. Inflatable bathtub. Wow, this is this is beautiful. Inflatable bathtub, right? So you can ship this. It's taking up zero space, zero percent breakability. Um, incredibly easy to find a manufacturer for this. Uh, so it's definitely one we should take a look at. KY Jelly, <laughs> um, Under Armour Performance Belt, hand towels, microwave, definitely something that I would not want to do, metal fidget spinners, I have absolutely no idea what that is, so let's take a look. Um, and we'll grab one more and then we'll kind of take a deeper dive into it and I'll kind of show you guys exactly what I'm looking for on listings, you know, doing some brainstorming, seeing if we can, you know, 
beat them easily by just taking better product photography and beating them out on better um, copy. You know, some of these some of these listings are put up pretty quick by people by Chinese manufacturers, and you can kind of tell from their broken English that um, you could potentially do a better job just simply from a keyword and listing strength from a copy perspective. Um, goat story. What on earth is that? <laughs> Brand goat story. I, I'm not sure what that is. We're gonna skip that one. It's kind of weird. So just as a as a side note to you guys, these type of products are doing crazy numbers, right? Twenty six thousand, only twelve reviews, but they're banned on Amazon right now. So how these people get away with it is they intentionally miscategorize, right? Like you probably wouldn't categorize a twisty glass blunt as being part of the kitchen. Um, so they intentionally miscategorize it and Amazon eventually catches them and shuts them down, right? So they're making, you know, a ton of money, but you know, they're risking their account health and it's just not viable for the long term. You know, if Amazon ever does choose to, um, legalize those, then potentially it's something that you could explore. All right. This, this might be an interesting one. Wow. They're selling 60 gallon trash bags, a hundred a case for $32. This could be an interesting one too. All right, so let's look at these two. All right, so once we have all of these um, kind of tabs to look at, then we're gonna take kind of a deeper dive. So let's let's get into it. All right, so our first item. All right, take a look at this copy. This is absolute garbage, right? So normally this would say something like, um, perfect for storing all of your wine needs in an aesthetic, pleasing way. Uh, and then it would have like a paragraph after explaining, you know, how many bottles you can store, why it's so amazing, and why you'd love it. The next, the next bullet might say, you know, only made with premium mahogany wood, uh, shine to a beautiful finish that would look great in any home, right? And so they have placement desktop. <laughs> um, so obviously, you could definitely uh, hit them here. They only have one picture, right? And this isn't even that great of a quality picture you can't even zoom in right so it's not high def um, let's take a quick look at the customer reviews impossible to put together right so that's a good one maybe you can make a more intuitive design with better instruction manual um, and be able to you know potentially have, make a better make a better bottle in that way um so it doesn't even look like this is actually sold from a single seller yeah, so this actually isn't even prime. So for this example, I'm not actually going to um, add this one. So we're just going to move on to the next one. All right, so this is another good one. Um, Go Bar Ballet Workout Bar by GoFit. So it looks like you get a CD, you get a calendar, you get whatever that is, and you get a ball. And you get the ballet bar, right? So this is $150. So this is a, this is a great uh, example of a bundle, right? And so a bundle is a way to differentiate a product, probably the best way to differentiate a product, um, you know, whether it's uh, a cigar holder and you're throwing in like a set of whiskey glasses or something that you think that your target demographic may also find value from that your competition isn't doing, right? And so they, they do a good job here. Um, they have the training manual, they have the DVD for you to follow along. But like I was saying before, right, so look at look at their copy, includes USA hardware bar, right? So this is not what Amazon shoppers are trying to see. They want to see perfect size for your beautiful, like, ballerina or perfect size for any ballerina and then explaining, you know, all the different benefits that you're getting from it. The next one might say something like, and, and you know, guys, I'm just doing this live, so I don't, I don't have all the best copy written, but, you know, sitting down in an hour, you could whip something out, five paragraphs that just would put this absolutely to shame, right? And so they have one picture. It looks like they also have a video. Um, specific sellers that have been around for a while have access to videos on their, um, on their listings. So let's look at it really quick. Or maybe let's not, if it's not going to play. <laughs> um, let's take a look, quick look at the customer reviews. So somewhat recent, um, today is January 31st, 2017. So this was you know a couple months ago. So people are buying it. 
pros, bar took my 10-year-old 15 minutes to assemble, right? So it's easy to set up and press, but with how stable and adjustable the bar is. So not bad. So let's take a look at some of the negative reviews. Extremely disappointed. There was no ball resistant bands, DVD, or limited workbook that came with it. The box was damaged on arrival. Would not recommend this. It's very, very unstable. Got wobble in unstable, right? So, so maybe you put together a bundle, make sure that you're actually including all the items, and you make a bar that has a bit more stability, right? So that might be a good one. So let's let's add this one to our cart. And so every time that you identify a product that you think might be interesting, go ahead and add it to cart. And I'm going to explain to you guys exactly why we do that in a, at the um, end of this video. All right, so this one has 48% one stars. That is absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to find more. So I replaced these two in my spot. I'm going to replace a third one in my pool. Five failures in five years, right? So bad products, they're not lasting. So maybe you can go ahead and get a sample from a manufacturer, right? So you could go on to Alibaba, which is the main source that everyone is searching for. You look for... Um, Right, so what what are the main keywords for this? You maybe look for standard pool light, right? And so then they'll have images of what they sell, and then you want to make sure that you get a sample and really beat the crap out of it and make sure that it's actually working underwater and you know it's lasting for you before you decide to make an investment in it. Um, and so this is kind of a cool one, right? So this is the main one that it's on. When you're adding to cart and there's variations like this. Whichever one that it defaults to, so for example, this is the one that it defaulted to when you came to this link. Go ahead and add that one to cart. Right, and so I'll do a few more of these guys. I hope you're kind of getting the, the thought process behind this. Um, again, terrible, terrible copy. This one has a few more pictures, right? These are high def. See how it's zooming in like that? Um, you want to have, you want to make sure that you have high def. Uh, definitely the most important thing, no question, for a buyer is the product photography, right? So your photos are the number one thing that you guys want to be making absolutely sure that you're doing um, the best job of. Do not skimp on that. So this was a dead link that we got from Jungle Scout. Terrible copy. Not eligible for Prime. So this one is actually um, what, what's called FBM. So this is, for example, Flash Forge has uh, a warehouse that they own, it's not affiliated with Amazon, and every time they get an order, they ship it from their warehouse to wherever the order came from on Amazon. Amazon takes its fee, but it's not eligible for Prime, which means it's not two-day shipping, which is a absolutely huge factor that um, buyers consider before making a purchase. Again, not out, not eligible for Prime. You may be an asshole, but you're my asshole. <laughs> Um, I like this one um, just because it's funny and I'm a sick, demented person like most people on Amazon <laughs> or so. So a couple more broken links. We Fidget Premium Fidget Spinners. Relieve your stress, anxiety, HD, and boredom. You can spin up for four minutes. Okay, so this, this just looks like a little toy. I actually love this one. It's tiny, right? So this is going to cost nothing to ship. That's made of metal, um, so it's not going to break. Great price point, right? Forty nine ninety five. Let's look at some of these reviews really quick. The bearings are difficult to move. We don't recommend it. The finish is nice. It's only really matter if the product doesn't. Bar bearings are cheap, and the ball doesn't fit. This creates a wobble. Wizard. Yeah. So if you, you know, spent some more time with the manufacturer and made sure that they're actually, you know, measuring it out and making sure that it was spinning with the proper weight so that it didn't feel like it was wobbling to any side. It looks like something that people care about. It's definitely a good one. Let's go ahead and add this to cart. Again, awful copy. I mean, terrible. This is a terrible listing, right? And you're selling trash bags, so apparently, apparently people don't care. But, um, you know, everyone needs trash bags. I buy everything off Amazon, you know, toothpaste, toilet paper, trash bags, everything, right? And, you know, people in my generation are definitely, if, the, if not already doing it, are trending towards it. So, um, you know, it's not sexy, but I always tell people and I always, you know, harp on this, 
selling the products that aren't sexy is is smart, right? Because the people who are starting out, they want to sell something cool, right? They want to sell a laser pointer or a TV or something that, you know, that they want to talk about, but it doesn't really it doesn't really make a difference, right? If you're if you're making money, which is what I'm doing and what I intended to do on Amazon to be able to travel and do all the things that I want, then it really doesn't matter what I'm selling, whether it's a trash bag or, you know, it's trying to source Rex. Um, so let's look at the reviews. Weak and tears easily, right? So maybe you make these double ply. Um, the brand name is not in the title, so I wouldn't worry too much about people actually searching for, you know, specifically plastic place gallon trash bags. So let's take a look at this. Right, and so that is um, method number one. Um, so method number two, we're just going to jump right in. So I preloaded this for you guys. Um, the example that I was talking about being at my friend's house when his dad was the you know major cigar fan and he was showing me his collection and he had this beautiful little box that they were stored in. And at the time, I thought it was called a cigar holder. And so I asked him and he told me that it was actually called a humidor. And so this is the second um, way that you can use Jungle Scout to do product research. This is the Chrome app. What we were previously using is the web app. So you just go to junglescout.com for the web app. For the Chrome app, which is also downloaded from junglescout.com, it just forms this little button up here in Google Chrome. And when you come to any page on Amazon, um, it shows you all of the different statistical estimates in kind of a nice little area. So the first listing, here it is. So this one's doing almost $40,000 a month, right? And so that's insane. Um, and so it gives you an estimate of the FBA fee, right, which is based on weight, which is based on size. Um, if, if, if an item is oversized, then you get charged, you know, more or less, depending on a variety of factors. And Amazon has all that. Just Google search FBA fees, oversized, standard. It breaks them down really simply. Um, it's pretty easy to follow along. So the cool thing about the web app is you can actually look at any product, right? So the web, or sorry, the, the Chrome extension. The web app is good for finding products that you know you weren't really thinking about, but using method two, which is you know reframing your mentality to kind of see life through the Amazon lens, the, the Chrome extension is perfect for that, right? So you just go to the normal Amazon website, you type in Humidor, and this is what pops up, right? So this is a bunch of different listings, all for humidors. And you know, if you get to the end of one page, you just go down here, quick, quick, um, quickly, just click extract next page. And um, the most interesting and definitely the most useful portion of um, the Chrome extension is the filter option, right? So again, these are the same filters that we were looking at in the web app, but you can do it for any product, right? So this is these are the ones that you're finding in your daily life that you're hearing about, um, things like that. And so what I like to do, same things, 39 reviews. Um, you know, maybe let's start with 6,000 revenue per month. And let's go ahead and filter that. And so there's not a ton, right? Um, but there are some. So it means that, you know, on the first three, four pages, there's four products that meet our requirements. So let's take a look at why. Well, let's look at all four of these just so I can really just dive deep and show you guys exactly how I'm thinking about all of this. Um, all right, so the first one. So this one's making about $7,000 a month with only six reviews, right? So that that is definitely, you can definitely top that. Premium La Cubana, luxury humidifier and hygrometer box set, right? So they they have two um, items in there, promotes ideal smoking conditions. And right, so this is, this is finally an example of a listing that is well done, right? So they have clear, um, they have clear headers, a cigar aficionado's best friend, a humidor you can be proud of, right? So appealing to, you know, the human aspect. People who, you know, people who are the target buyers of humidors, they want to brag about the cigars. They care about it. It's important to them. If cigars weren't important to you, then you wouldn't buy a humidor. You'd just buy a cigar and smoke it or just, you know, throw it in the garage and never see it again. So look at this. All of these are, all of these are high definition, right? These are fully polished. This listing is of great quality, right? And that's why it's making almost eight thousand dollars a month with only six reviews. So this is this is definitely one we can look at. Let's go ahead and add that. All right, so this is this is an interesting one. So this this person decided to take the route of um, 
actually providing the solution for cigar humidifiers. So I assume that this is something to do with maybe not having moisture. Yeah, so antifungal. All right, so this is um, this is something that you're using as a, a complement to the humidors. And I've seen this all the time, guys, right? So people focus entirely on the main product and not the complementary products that you know most people require with the main product. And that's definitely something you always want to be looking at. So let's add this to cart. So this is maybe a larger capacity. Obviously, this listing is terribly done. It's not eligible for a prime, but maybe if you want like kind of the portability um, of it. Um, and again, you know, I'm doing this in real time, so I can't always tell you exactly, but I would assume that uh, this might be interesting because you can actually transport it kind of in its own little briefcase, maybe if you're going on a trip, um, something like that. So it's definitely something to take a look at. Um, the new air three, 400 count. So this is if you're like the maximum cigar freak. Like if you just live and die cigars, repels cigar beetles. <laughs> um, yeah, so you definitely don't want cigar beetles all up in your, in your humidor when you're trying to, you know, keep those Cubanos safe. So this is a, this is a reasonably well done, um, listing this is you know this is for the this is for the true cigar aficionado um it's something that we can look at it's definitely a high ticket again it would kind of be prohibitive depending on whether or not you have a, a large amount of startup capital but it's definitely something that we can still take a look at um another way that i like to do a bit of research is using a tool called merchant words and so what merchant words does is it gives you a uh, similar phrases, buyer oriented phrases that people are actually typing in on Amazon. Um, and it's giving you those in a pretty easy to use way. Um, and so let's, let's take a look through some of these, right? So they have a free trial as well. Everything, everything that I've shown you so far is a free trial. So there's no excuses. <laughs> Start now. I promise you it's worth it. I did it in three months. And if I can do it, I can definitely assure you that you can do it too. Um, so humidor, cigar humidor, humidor for cigars, right? So these are all kind of the same thing. Maybe a cabinet. Um, maybe this is a larger version, right? So you always want to use different quantifiers, you know, large, small, black, white, you know, depending on what the, uh, what the different products are. Just using those initial kind of suffixes that change the overall um, aspect of the product is something that you want to look at, right? So these are brand names. And here you go, right? So this is the um, propylene glycol humidor solution. So this is what we saw before. So th there was only one listing. It had very few reviews and it was making, you know, six, seven grand a month. And so, I mean, that's nothing to, that's nothing to, you know, laugh at at all. $6,000 a month from one product when you, you know, add a second or a third and you're all of a sudden you're making, you know, 15, $20,000 a month, you know, that's, that's serious money. So, you know, you definitely want to consider products that wouldn't necessarily be what, you know, the, conventional Amazon guru would tell you to target, but you know, it's definitely a way to do it. And so add three products that are making five grand a month rather than, you know, that one home run that has a ton more competition making 15 grand a month. And you know, you're, you're slowly and quietly killing it while everyone else is fighting the competition to the death and ruining their profit margins and you know, things like that. So here's one cheap cigar humidor, travel humidor. Let's look at this one. So travel humidor, and here you go. So this is the one, this is similar to the one that I was looking at that we saw before, right? Yeah, so Zcar, this is the same brand. So these guys specifically targeted a niche of the original product. This is a beautiful illustration of what we were talking about, right? So they're going after the person that wants to take cigars with them on the go, right? So look, this, is, this holds three cigars. They're charging $25 for it. Making 10 grand a month, 42 reviews, right? And so that, you know, that took us 10 minutes and I'm doing this all live. I'm, I, you know, this is a perfect example of how you can just kind of stumble 
um, into different variants and using different, you know, qualifiers like big, travel, on the go, black, you know, different different words really open up different avenues that you maybe didn't think of. And, you know, merchant words or Google keyword planner and things like that really are great for that type of thing. All right, guys, so that is method two. I hope you uh, enjoyed both method two and method one. I know it's kind of a lot, but I hope it was helpful for you. And now I'm going to show you the absolutely most important part of all of this, the eye track method. All right, guys. All right, guys, so step three, final step in this magical process that we have gone through together. Um, so step three, uh, after we put everything into our cart that we were looking at before, right, um, so just open up an Excel sheet, right? I use Google um, Google Docs, but obviously Excel works fine as well. Um, and so then the first thing I do is go ahead and take the title, right? So this is just something that you can kind of keep for yourself. So I just wrote 60 gallon trash. Um, I also included the link. Um, it makes it easier in the long term to include the link. Just trust me on that. When you get, you know, 50 or 100 different products in a spreadsheet, you want to have the link um, just to make sure that you can get back to the product, you know, a week or a month down the line. So just trust me on that. So 60 gallon trash bags, um, Z car travel, right? And so these are all the different products that you looked at down to the Go Bar Ballet Bar. And now what you're going to do, and this is this is the secret, guys. This is what everybody that doesn't know needs to know. And I'm sharing it with you guys because I just want everybody to gain the financial freedom um, that I was lucky enough to get myself. So what we did right here is one, right? So it's showing one here. I clicked 10 plus just like that. So I'll do it one more time so everybody can see. Um, one All right so this is the default click one 10 plus just go nine 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 and so what this is showing us guys is that the seller has 635 of these available so we mark that down for today change it back to one and go on to the next one right and this is a perfect just as a side note this is a absolutely perfect activity for your um, virtual assistant to take care of if you do have one, right? Because obviously this is a bit tedious, but trust me guys, you do not want 500 units sitting in an FBA warehouse, you know, accumulating storage fees when you could have just spent $20 on a VA to do this for you for a week or just, you know, do it for yourself. So trust me, trust me, trust me, please. If you're going to trust me on anything, trust me on doing this. It will help you. I promise. Um, so this one Z car. So I don't actually have to do it because it says it right here. One in stock which is a little bit boring, but you know, it is what it is. So this one's actually um, in stock on February 5th, but it has two available, so I'm not sure why that's showing. Um, we'll reset that one. So the premium La Cubana has four in stock. It says it right here. So we'll go on to We Fidget. So we fidget has 495 in stock, and I, I can tell some of the some of the sharp folks out there are probably um, you know kind of seeing where we're going with this. Today they have this much, tomorrow they have you know maybe two less, five less, some amount less. So you know for sure, and this is the only source of data that shows you exactly how many products your competitors are actually selling on a daily basis. And you want to you want to make sure that you're doing it for like five, you know, three at the absolute minimum. But you really want to do it for seven days. And let me tell you why, um, because these these numbers can be um, skewed for a number of reasons. Um, for example, if Amazon is shifting uh, uh, inventory between some of their FBA warehouses, you might see this number jump from 600 to 400, or it might be 700 the next day because you know this uh, this brand or this seller sent in 70 more units, right? So you want to do it over a seven day period so that you're pretty sure based on the pattern that you're actually getting the data that you're looking for. Um, so the next one is funny, Teddy. You are an asshole, but you're my asshole. Uh, 92 left. Oops, 92. Um, Safavia. Looks like they got 16. And you want to reset these because sometimes you'll get an error that says your cart only has the additional space of, uh, you know, 500 units because it only lets you have 999 units of all the combined products um, at once. So there's two left of this Hayward. 
And the last one, go bar ballet workout bar. Right, so your cart has an additional space for 949, which means that they probably have more than that, but let's just make sure. Oops, I guess you're seeing some other products that I've been looking at. <laughs> I won't hide it from you guys, it's all good. Uh, 954, oops, my math is not good. So let's see if I'm actually able to. So this means that they're prime, which means they're in an FBA warehouse and they have a hundred and they have over 950 units in stock. So that either means that they're absolutely insane or it means that this product is selling and they, they thought that it was, you know, based on their inventory forecast, it was worth it to send this many units to be sitting in an Amazon warehouse. So they they either are crazy or it's selling a lot. So one way to tell, you know, which it is, whether they're uh, clinically insane or they're just sending in a, you know, a bunch of units is using a product called Camel Camel Camel, which is a ridiculous name, obviously, but it's pretty useful. So let me show you why. So what I just did there um, is I copy and pasted the ASIN, which is a unique identifier Amazon uses to track products. Um, it usually says product slash and then has the ASIN. It normally starts with a B and has a um, set of hexadecimal. Um, letters after it, so I just pasted that in here, and the product shows up, and then you just go to sales rank, and so what this does, obviously, oh wow, so yeah, so this this product launched on August, in August, right, and so it was, it was very deep in the catalogs of the BSR, which is the best sellers rank, but right as it launched, you know, it went pretty high up there, and you know, these are periods where, you know, potentially they might have went out of stock, or something like that, but you can see that it's averaging about 7,000 um, out of all the different hundreds of thousands of products um, sold on Amazon, right? So this is this is in the, right, so this is sports and outdoors. So this is number 52 in sports and outdoors, which is obviously a huge section. So you know, you can be pretty darn sure that this is selling um, a great deal, right? So I like to see these numbers um, just to be absolutely sure, but if you kind of do the research, you're looking at the listing itself, right? It's obviously pretty high in a very um, competitive, large category. You know, 29,000 in sports and outdoors as an entire category, 52 um, in sports and outdoors, strength and cleaning. So yeah, so it's 52 um, out of the home gym section. Um, so you, you can be pretty sure based on the camel, camel, camel uh, average BSR charts combined with its overall ranking in such a large category. So for these ones, I just do 999 plus. And so I'm going to pause the video now and I'm going to start it up tomorrow and then we're going to take a look at the numbers and uh, go from there. All right, guys. So since I wanted to get this out quicker, I'm just going to um, kind of go through some of these numbers and just um, explain my thoughts on them um, and just kind of go through it as a, a demo. All right. So here's the first one, the 60 gallon trash bag. So the original numbers that we looked at 635, right? So the next day it was at 630. So it sold five. Right. So this is 100 a case. So if you're looking at a minimum order quantity from a manufacturer, um, for this specific product, it would probably be pretty high because, you know, it's a trash bag, not like a, you know, expensive humidor holder that is holding 100 scars or something like that. But if you're selling 100 a case, even if you have 5,000 in your minimum order quantity and you're selling five sets of 100 a day, that's 500 a day, you know, and you get to that, you get to that minimum order quantity in about 10 days, which is obviously incredible. And if you're ordering that many trash bags, you're going to get a price that is very good, right? So 100 a case, 32.85. I mean, that's crazy. That's like 30, that's 33 cents a trash bag, which I guess I don't know much about trash bags. But um, there's definitely something that is worth looking into, obviously, because this listing is absolute trash as well. Um, so the next day, it jumped up to 947. So don't panic when you see stuff like this, guys. All it means is that they probably just restocked. So they're you know constantly sending in more inventory 
and you know they don't send in a thousand at a time or or more because they don't want to pay those long-term storage fees that hit you after six months and if you have questions about that right I'm gonna make more videos about long-term storage fees how to avoid it inventory forecasting things like that I mean there's a ton of info on all of these topics in our Facebook group so definitely make sure you check that out after the video um, so 947 down to 900 right so this is this is insane so if it's selling 47 units a day um, 100 a pack you know that's 4700 that's 4700 trash bags a day um, and so you know you're looking at another 55 units a day um, so this is definitely one to look at right so you might need a few more days of data um, you want to make sure that this wasn't like a you know some type of fluke or maybe they're doing a giveaway to kind of you know boost their BSR maybe get some more reviews and things like that so maybe a few more days of data here but it's definitely one that is worth looking at so we're gonna we're gonna star this one alright so the next one is the Zeker Travel so this one was the Humidor um, there's not a ton of data here right because it started with one um, and so you know it's going down zero 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 so you definitely if you're interested in this one wanna um, you know take a look at a little bit more data once they do get back in stock so the Z car 9815 so oops I wrote that wrong the Z car 815 XI two 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 right so if this is the data you're looking at guys um, you may be are you know you maybe you want to stay away from this product right because if it's selling zero in five days that that's not enough velocity to kind of make your time and everything that goes into choosing a successful product um, worthwhile so if it's two 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 you know if you love it maybe track it for a few days more but you know this is definitely one that we're probably going to stay away from so I'm gonna go ahead and unbold that um, the premium La Cubana So this one we're looking at four, four, three, four, right? And so this might be a return um, if it drops down to three, and then you know a customer return, maybe the stock shoots back up to four. But then on this last day, we're looking at um, one. So maybe it sold three in this day. And for kind of a high ticket item like this, you know things that are over a hundred dollars. If you're selling three a day, you know that's three hundred dollars. If you're making even like a forty percent profit margin on that, that's one hundred and twenty dollars, right? So in a in a short amount of time. And over here, guys, this is just notes that I keep to myself, right? So, you know, I was showing you guys that it was a return, some sales maybe. Um, you need more info, right? Because if it's selling three a day, maybe when they restock and it's kind of averaging that three a day, then maybe it's worth pursuing. So the next one is We Fidget. So this is that weird little um, device that you spin and, you know, is supposed to make you happier with your life. Um, and so it's selling, look, five, five a day, six a day, four, seven, right? So this looks great, right? Especially at this price point, this thing cannot cost more than, you know, $4 to make if you're ordering it at any type of quantity. Um, something to look at obviously is the Wee Fidget brand, right? So they're leading off with that. Maybe this is a popular brand. Um, I would have to do more research into it see if, you know, they maybe have a patent on these types of, uh, things, but you obviously see another seller right here. You know, but this seems to be their thing. Obviously, they don't have very good ratings, but, you know, you can use the Jungle Scout um, Chrome extension to kind of look at a, a seller's actual profile. And they're doing pretty insane numbers, to be honest. <laughs> like, these are, some of these are outrageous. I, I, I don't know what these are, to be honest, so I, I can't speak more to it kind of live doing this for you guys. But I would look more into this, right? Because if these types of, you know, stress relief toys that are super small and pretty interesting in my opinion are doing those types of insane numbers right and those are just estimates remember that it's just an estimate on Jungle Scout and every other piece of software so you have to do this inventory tracking to actually be able to see it right so if it's selling five a day at fifty dollars per then that's I mean that's amazing right because I can't see each sale being anything less than twenty dollars profit per right so if you're doing five a day that's a hundred dollars a day uh, profit for one product, which is which is awesome, right? You know, that's nothing to that's nothing to scoff at at all. So the next one, Funny Teddy. Um, so this is an interesting one, right? So we started at 92, 82, right? So 10 a day. You know, here's 14 a day, 28 in one day, right? 
and 8. So, I mean, these numbers are something you always want to be thinking about, you know, what time of season is it? Am I, am I selling a pair of mittens and is it uh, winter in the United States? You know, you want to think about seasonality. You know, there's, there's more advanced methods that I talk about um, a lot in our Facebook group, like using Google Trends and Google Insights to kind of get that type of data around, you know, uh, seasonality, trends, things that you want to be definitely wary of. So uh, during this type of month, this is definitely something that, you know, I could see my, you know, girlfriend getting me or somebody with a sense of humor or just like an asshole. <laughs> Maybe my mom gets this for me. If she thinks I'm an asshole, she probably does. Um, but yeah, so I want to be cognizant of the fact that it is near Valentine's Day. So this could potentially be skewing the data. So I definitely want to look at this again before kind of committing to things. Um, maybe after Valentine's Day just to get a better idea of whether or not uh, it is skewed or if that's the numbers that it's doing, you know, often because there are a lot of anniversaries, obviously. So it could be interesting, but definitely want a little bit more data outside of the Valentine's Day uh, rush. So the next one is Safa Via. Um, the storage bench. So it looks like pretty pretty consistent one per day. Um, right, so this could be interesting. Uh, you know, it's $164. I'd have to see how much each one costs. Obviously, I'd have to see what the fees are that Amazon's charging um, and things like that. Um, and just as an aside, guys, so if you want to figure out uh, an estimate that's very close, they say it's an estimate, but it's, it's usually very close, of how much that you're going to be hit with Amazon fees, head over to the Fulfillment by Amazon Revenue Calculator. And so you can just go Amazon FBA uh, Price Calculator in Google. Um, it's the first result. And then, so all I did here was copy and paste the ASIN that we talked about earlier. This is the unique identifier that Amazon uses to um, kind of categorize products. Throw it in here, enter, right? It brings up the product. And then you just go all the way to the bottom. Don't fill out anything. Go to calculate, right? So the FBA fees on this are $142, which is obviously a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, right? So they're charging 164. And so if you're taking 142 out of that, right that's that's insane you know that's that only leaves forty dollars for your cost of goods sold your shipping so you know right away that's out right so I, I don't know what the deal is with this maybe they um maybe they have something oh so this is yeah this isn't eligible for amazon prime right so they're not actually fulfilling this via the fba warehouse they're sending this out um via their own warehouse that they own so there isn't fba fees involved um, so this is either way though, you could never sell this in an FBA warehouse at this price and be profitable. So definitely want to count that one out. All right, two more to go. I hope this is helpful. I want to go through a number so you guys can kind of see everything, um, in a nutshell, All right? So two, two, obviously they're restocking here and then down to one right? None here, but this is an interesting one, right? Because for 590 or $550, you really only have to sell one because these are, these are small. I mean, let's, let's throw this into the fee calculator and see what we're working with here. So for 550 with an $11 fee, that is an absolutely insane profit margin, right? So you only need to sell one every three days because you're making, you know, after, just just fee wise you're making five hundred and forty dollars profit right and then even if your cost of goods sold for four sets of light is fifty bucks which i assume it isn't right and shipping's somewhat negligible because it's small um it's electronic so they you could potentially be facing more returns um but i mean with that kind of profit margin it doesn't even really matter a ton right if you're as long as you're selling some um it's definitely one to to take a look at and so the last one is the ballet bar right so 999 plus right so luckily it dropped down to 978 six a day here zero here and then seven so that's pretty consistent right this is definitely good numbers 149 dollars um is is great right like you want to you don't want to shy away from these high ticket prices um you know because a lot of other sellers are put off by that which is a good thing. You want other people to be scared by something because then there's more there's more room for you. 
Um, all right, so let's calculate it on this last one. So $19, that leaves a really healthy margin, right? So $150 for the sales price, $20 in fees is $130. Um, you know, cost of goods sold, shipping, you can kind of estimate those after you've talked to a few manufacturers. Uh, you can, you know, use shipping calcul calculators or find a, a freight forwarder. And, you know, I have, my, I have all my recommendations for the absolute best customer service, the cheapest freight forwarders, you know, all those things are in the Facebook group and I'm happy to share that. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was methods one, two, and three and a really detailed step by step by step, all the software I use, all the methods I use, um, all the tips and tricks, everything I'm looking for, everything I'm trying to avoid. And finally, the eye track method to just make sure that you're looking at this, guys, because it's the most important. It's the only true source of data. So make sure you're doing it. I know it's tedious, but I promise you it'll be worth it when you're when you're making sales and, you know, three, four months down the line, depending on whether you ship by sea or air, it can be much faster by air, but obviously it's more expensive. You know, between two weeks and three months down the line when you're you know, making your own income and you're doing it all from your computer, wearing your underwear, you know, chilling with your wife or husband or kids. And I, I promise you it's so worth it. So just do the little extra steps, use the tricks that I've shown you. Um, and, and really that's, that's it. So you can, once you, once you see that those sales are being made every day, then you know for sure that uh, your competitors are doing it and if they have bad pictures if they have bad copy if they have you know if you've thought of a clever way to bundle something or or make it different in some you know intelligent way that's that's it guys that's all there is to it it's really that simple and so for a lot of other like super advanced stuff regarding um, other marketplaces right so tips and tricks it's a really different um, demographic target market things are kind of just done differently on different marketplaces but the Trust me, they absolutely should not be ignored. The UK market is absolutely booming. It's growing a huge amount every year. Um, so for a lot more advanced stuff on how to how to pick your products in the UK, you know, Germany, some other large markets that a lot of sellers ignore, make sure that you're checking out some of my other videos and absolutely make sure that you're joining the Facebook group because there's a bunch of, you know, really intelligent sellers in there that are giving away all this amazing information. So make sure that you guys are checking it out. All right, guys, I know that was kind of a long one, but I really wanted to show you every single step-by-step -step of how I'm doing my product research and how you can do the exact same thing just by following these quick steps, and you can really feel confident that your very first product is going to be a home run using these methods. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please check out my other videos. Definitely make sure you check out the Facebook group. There's amazing info in there. All of the people are super helpful, super friendly. They're going to teach you exactly what they know, and everybody collaborates, and it's really a beautiful thing. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe, and we will see you guys next time.